Ladies and gentlemen who are getting a little bit of flakes on dates and you want to know what to do about it, I got a cool question on YouTube and I'm going to start answering more questions again from you guys and girls. It's something I haven't done in a little while, so feel free to dump questions and I will answer them. So this question goes, hi Andy, I've been having some success setting up dates recently, which is a great change. Absolutely amazing. I love that. Now my issue is that it's a 50-50 chance that they will flake on the first date. I was wondering how you recommend I handle this. Should I just stop accepting reschedules? Should I be upfront in my profile about that? And do you have any content on this currently? Thank you. So the very first thing that I would say, let's start with, is it actually 50-50? You know, a lot of the time, especially in dating where there's a lot of emotions and we're, we're very invested in how it goes and we feel like we have a lot riding on it. I think especially as men, but women do a lot as well. And we can get very emotional about this. I would take a step back and ask yourself, is it actually 50% of the time that I'm getting flaked on or does it just feel like that? Sometimes, you know, if you get a few flakes in a row or it happens to be you know, a little bit of random bad luck. Maybe you go and approach 20 women and you don't get a single phone number. You feel like, man, this is not working out at all. Why is it going like this? But if you actually take a step back and look at the bigger picture, you can kind of go, okay, maybe it wasn't 50-50 all the time. I'm just having a little bit of a bad run. So start with that. Now let's assume that it is still 50-50 and it's not just like getting caught up in the moment and getting caught up in almost like recency bias. So let's assume it is 50-50. How many times has this actually happened? Because a lot of the time we read too much into a tiny t sample size. I see this a lot, like in my coaching program, in you know YouTube comments, where maybe you've only gone on or you've only set up 10 or 15 dates recently and 50 of them have flaked. 10 or 15 is only a really small sample size. That's not a lot. If it's something that's happening like 50 times or something, you've had 50 flakes, then yeah, I would go into it and I would say, okay, is there something I could be doing to improve things? Like, do I want to start screening a little harder? Like, like what's actually going on here? So start with those two premises. Is it actually 50-50? Like, is it actually 50% of the time that you're getting flaked on? And how big is your sample size? All right, start with that. Now the actionable advice that I would give is, I did an article a while ago on my website called The Solution to All of Your Problems, Go Talk to More Girls. and this pretty much applies to women too. If there's any women listening, and it doesn't mean that you have to go and sleep with everybody or anything like that. I know that everybody has different preferences for how much sex they want to have, how they want to have it. You know, maybe you want monogamy, whatever it might be. But if you feel like your dating life is not going the way that you want it to, or you feel like you're just not meeting the people that you want, a big solution, a big easy quick fix is to just talk to more people. You know what I mean? If you're meeting a lot of people that you don't resonate with, go talk to more people. Along with that, improve yourself along the way. Obviously, that's a big focus of my content and my channel, but just talking to more people can kind of solve a lot of the issues and the struggles and the frustrations that we feel in dating because you're not going to match with everybody. Like you're not going to be a good fit for everybody and you're not going to resonate with everyone. You might not always be on the same wavelength. You both might not be looking for the same things. So I would start with that. The second thing that I would say is, well, actually further on that point. So if you had five dates scheduled for the next two weeks, like dislodged, the person here asking this question, I'm saying this directly to you and anybody else in the same situation. If you had five dates scheduled for the next week or two, would you care about a couple of flakes? No, because you'd have like five other people that you're gonna go on a date with. You, you wouldn't really care. Again, I give this same advice to any women. If you had multiple people that you could possibly go on a date with, would you care if this guy in particular is hot and cold or he's not replying to your messages or you know you you can't read him, you don't know if he how he feels about you, would you care? Probably not, cuz you're like it's fine. I know there's other people out there. A further answer on this is work on your self-love. When you like yourself, when you love yourself even, but even if you just like yourself, you care a lot less about how other people might not treat you, but like whether or not other people are responding to you or flaking. And we'll talk about self-love in a second. But a big answer here, a very, 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 very 
very useful answer here is to have a backup option for your dates. So I did this video a while ago. Look at that beautiful little Santa hat. And the video is called always have a backup option for flakes and how to have your own mission going on. I talk a little bit about that as well. But in particular, in this video, I talk about if you just come up with a backup option for your dates, like and pre plan that have that in your head before you go on the date. You're not so worried about a flake. In fact, a flake is a is perfectly like you don't even care because, hey, I'm going to go and do my backup option. Like, what do I care if this person shows up for the date? I had something else that was cool that's planned. And so if they don't show up, hey, cool, I just execute on my backup option. And it's like the night is as amazing as if they had shown up or the day is as amazing as if they had shown up. There's also a very similar podcast over on my Spotify channel or wherever you listen to my podcast called Make Girls the Backup Plan. And again, any women listening, this stuff can apply to you as well. And so I talk about putting yourself first and have your own life going on. And women are a nice bonus to an already great life. Same thing with any women listening. I would never, ever, ever tell you to put the opposite gender or put whoever it is that you're dating. I would never say to put them as the main focus. Put yourself as the main focus. And somebody else is a beautiful addition to that. A book that really, really, really applies all of these concepts is Byron Katie's book, I Need Your Love. Is that true? And the point of this book is how to stop seeking love and, you know, approval and validation and all of that kind of stuff and start finding it instead. What she means by finding it instead is really giving it to yourself. That's kind of the secret of this book is like, do I need somebody else to answer my text messages? Do I need somebody else to give me validation? Do I need somebody else to show up for a date? Like, in other words, if they don't show up for the date, what if I just show up myself? And what I mean by that is if that person isn't going to be there for me for this date, why don't I be there for myself? Why don't I go and do my, you know, what I call backup option? Why don't I go for a nice walk if that's something you want to do? Why don't I text one of my friends before the date and I say, hey, look, I'm going on a date tonight. But if this person doesn't show up, do you want to grab a beer with me or something? We can do something cool and text that to all of your friends or, you know, one or two of your friends. And when they say when one of them says yes, you say, cool, like I've got now a backup option where I can be there for myself. If none of your friends are free, okay, cool. I'll do something nice for myself. I'll go and watch that movie that I've been wanting to watch. I will work on my self-improvement. Funnily enough, something I used to do a lot as a backup option was I'll get an early night's sleep. So if this woman doesn't show up for a date, hey, that's cool. I get to catch up on my freaking sleep and I won't be so tired. So come up with some sort of backup option that actually genuinely excites you. And then if that person doesn't show up for the date, what do you care? Like you're going and doing something cool anyway. This is what I talk about when I say have your own cool life going on, have your own mission going on. So that if someone doesn't show up, you're like, cool, I'm just going to slip straight into plan B, my backup plan. I'm going to execute on that and I'm going to have a great day or a great night. A really, really, really useful concept that I get all of my coaching clients to do is what I'm showing here on screen. Whenever something happens, like they get flaked on or something like that, that they feel like is a bad thing, or, you know, there's some frustration there. It's like, man, like, why did I get flaked on? I was really excited for this date. Like, why do women keep flaking on me or guys keep flaking on me? What I get people to do is to turn it around and try and see the silver lining or try and see how it could possibly be a good thing. So what I'm showing here on screen is a slideshow from a video course that I'm, I'll be releasing in the next couple of weeks, probably. And this is one of the chapters, everything that happens to me is good. And part of this chapter, what I get you to do is I get you to go through. And instead of saying this bad thing is happening to me, I say, what if this is happening for me? As in, what if this is a gift? What if there's some silver lining here that could mean that this thing that I'm saying is bad is actually good or useful? Like, in other words, how can I benefit from this? So what I get all of my coaching clients to do in the coaching program, whenever something happens and they're frustrated by it or sad or depressed or unhappy, I say, come up with five reasons why this could be a good thing. Like right now, tell me five reasons this could be a good thing. So if we're using the example of getting flaked on and... God, we can even rewrite that. And we'll get into that in a second. I don't, I wouldn't even use the phrasing getting flaked on like she or he flaked on me. No, 
They just said yes to themselves. They just didn't want to come on a date with you. They wanted to do something else. So they said yes to themselves. They weren't so much saying no to you. They were saying yes to themselves. But we'll get into that in a second. So five reasons why this flake could be a good thing. Maybe the first one is, sweet, I get to give myself a little bit of self-love. I get to focus on my backup option and be kind to myself, which is something that most of us don't really spend a lot of time doing. In fact, I'd probably say, I don't know, make up some number, 90% of the population doesn't even have a concept of being nice to themselves or self-love. They'd say that that's weird or gay or silly or whatever. I used to say all of these things myself. And so the first reason this could be a good thing is I get to practice some of that self-love because I am the person that is with myself 24 seven. And if I rely on other people for love or other people for, va for validation or other people for excitement or joy or dopamine or happiness, man, I'm going to have to spend my entire life needing other people. And not that there's anything wrong with connecting with other people. That stuff is beautiful. But I think we all kind of know that it doesn't feel good to need someone when they're not able to give us the thing that we think we need. Right? Like if you need someone to reply to your text messages and they're not replying, I think we all agree that doesn't feel very good. But what if instead of relying on them to reply to your text messages, you just did something nice for yourself and you had an amazing night? A tip that I say there when you're trying to think like, how can I be nice to myself? How can I give myself this amazing day or this amazing night now that I've just got flaked on or now that this person has flaked? How do I give myself that amazing night? I say, what would you do for your best friend? Like, what would you do for them? What advice would you give them? How would you help them feel better? Do that shit for yourself. So if you would, for your best friend, say, hey, look, I'm here. I'm listening. Like, is everything okay? Give that to yourself. Like, listen to yourself. Literally get out a pen and paper and write down how you fucking feel. That's you listening to yourself. Like, vent onto that paper. Vent all of your feelings and your frustrations onto that paper. That's a beautiful thing that you could practice. Go for a walk and just let the thoughts bounce around in your mind and process them all. That's you listening to yourself. You know what I mean? Talk to someone else if one of your friends is available. And if they're not, that's fine. Give that to yourself. So there are ways to get the thing that we're trying to get from other people. There are ways to get that or give that to ourselves. And again, you are always with yourself 24 seven. You are your own best therapist. Once you can learn how to actually do that. You are your own best lover, I guess. Nobody is going to love you the way that you can love yourself once you actually practice this and get decent at it. And it takes, it can take a while. It took me a long time. You know, like I said, I worked through all the feelings of this is weird. This is gay. Why am I doing this? Other people should love me, not me. You know, all of that kind of stuff. But you are the one that is the, it, you are your best I guess I would say you're your best friend, you're your best therapist, you're your best lover. Once you learn how to actually practice and, and harness that power of, hey, I'm with myself 24 seven, I may as well be fucking nice to myself. You know, if I'm expecting other people to have a relationship with me, how is my relationship with myself? If I'm not kind and I don't have a strong relationship with myself, why the hell would I expect them to, to do that for me? If I don't, love and validate and be kind to myself. Why should I expect them to do it? Why would I want them or, or how is it reasonable for them to do something that I'm not willing to do myself? So you go first. So that's one big benefit or way that getting flaked on could be a good thing. Another one might be something like, hey, this is going to help me deal with my insecurities, right? Because for a lot of us, our biggest insecurity is rejection or getting flaked on, you know, the other person flaking or being hurt or getting heartbroken. And hey, this is the thing that is currently happening. I have just had this person flake. Now I'm dealing with my biggest fear. Hey, that's kind of beautiful. Most people don't address or deal with their biggest fears and I now get an opportunity to do so. That's kind of nice. Maybe I can even be grateful for this person for flaking. Hey, you helped me deal with my biggest fucking fears. My biggest fear came true or my biggest insecurity came true. Thank you for helping me deal with that. Like literally, thank you. You're, you're helping me be more resilient. You are helping me be more stoic and more strong. Thank you. Like, fuck, thank you. You might even text the person and say, hey, thank you for fucking flaking. Holy shit. I was mad at you for like, you know, two days and I worked through it all and I learned to love myself. Like, fuck, man, please flake on me again. Thank you. You actually, I'm actually glad you flaked on me rather than showing up to the damn date. So those are two reasons. You can come up with your own reasons, but this is something that I get all of my coaching clients, like I said, to do. Anytime they're frustrated or sad about something or pissed off that someone didn't do something they wanted them to do, I get them to just come up with five quick reasons, five easy reasons why this is a good thing. 
And every single time I get one of them to do this, they do the exercise and they're like, holy shit, I'm actually blessed. Like, I'm grateful this event happened. And so that's kind of the point of this, you know, like I said, this chapter in this upcoming video course is everything that happens to me is good. And if you hear that and go, no, it's not, there's lots of things that are bad. You can kind of rewrite that sentence to everything that happens to me could be good. Or there's a possibility that maybe there's some silver lining in there. If I go really digging really deep, maybe I can find it. So we're just opening the door a little bit to the potential that maybe everything that happens could possibly in some weird way be potentially slightly good. If that's all you can get, then beautiful. But it's my experience that everything that happens in my life is good. But it's taken me quite a few years to embrace that and, and understand that. I fought that for a long time and I wanted to hold on to my ego and my pride that said, no, this is bad. This shouldn't be happening. This person fucked me over. How could that ever be a good thing? Like, so take your time with this stuff. Be gentle with this stuff. All right. Getting into the self-love stuff here. One thing that you can do if you're feeling like flakes are frustrating you a little bit. Again, this applies to men. This applies to women. If you're feeling like flakes, flakes are frustrating you a little bit write a list of 50 things about yourself that are likable. And this is a concept that comes from my coaching program. I'm showing on screen like part of the video library that we have in the coaching program. So this one here, it's one of the first videos that I get people to watch. Um, there's mirror therapy in that as well. I'll talk about that in a second. But one of the first things I get people to do is write a list of 50 things that are likable about them. So this is a like one of the mandatory things I get people to do in the coaching program, I would sit down, if you're getting frustrated by flakes, and I would write 50 things about yourself that are likable. And if you struggle to get to 50, that's okay. You can take your time with this. This is allowed to take the rest of your life if it takes you the rest of your life. It, it won't, but you know, I've had some clients that take three months to write their whole list of 50 things. And I've had other people that can do it in a single day. They just do it in one go. So take your time with this if you need to, but coming up with a list of 50 things about yourself that are likable can help you sort of not take flakes so personally. You know, if someone flakes on you, you go, hey, but there's 50 things about myself that are likable. What do I care if this person doesn't recognize that? Or maybe if they're just busy or, you know, any other number of reasons why a person might have flaked on you. But if you have this list of 50 things about yourself that are likable, basically you have some sense of self-esteem. That is the intention of this exercise. It's to help build up that self-esteem. A similar exercise that I get all my coaching clients to do is what I call mirror therapy, which is where you look into the mirror and you say, I love you to yourself. And if this is something that you struggle with, I struggled with it at first. One of my coaches was the one who gave me this exercise, my coach, a guy called Keith. And he gave me this exercise and I really struggled with it the first few days. All of these thoughts come into my head. You know, this is gay. This is dumb. Why am I saying I love you to myself? This is silly. I don't want to do this. But once I gave it a chance and did it over a few, you know, weeks, at this point, I've been doing it for like a year and a half every single day. I haven't missed a day. Once I actually tried it a little bit, I found it helped strengthen the relationship or start building the relationship that I had with myself. And when you can get to a point where you can look in the mirror and say, I love you to yourself and nothing but a big giant smile comes on your face, which is a place that, that I believe everyone can eventually get to and be gentle with this. This can be quite a confronting exercise to do. But once you can get to that point where you smile every time you say, I love you to yourself, it's very hard to care or, or it's a lot harder to care about flakes because you're like, what do I care? I love myself. I'm, it, it's a blessing that I get to be me. I'm grateful that I get to be me. What do I care if somebody flaked? Yeah, I would prefer that they show up to a date. Yes, I would prefer that I get to meet more people and have sex and have relationships and connections and all of that. But at the end of the day, at least I'm stuck with me. Like if nobody else likes me, if nobody else wants to be with me, I'm stuck with me. And that's a beautiful thing because I love myself. And a lot of relationship stuff, a lot of sex stuff is driven by a, a fear of being alone. Right? I think we all know that. I think most people in, in life have a fear of being alone. When you stop and think about that, it's not really a fear of being alone. It's a fear of being stuck with yourself. That's what most people have a fear of because they don't 
like themselves. They don't like the thoughts that are in their head. In fact, for most people, the thoughts in their head terrify them. They're really scary. That's why, you know, you pull out your phone, you self-medicate, you distract yourself, you doom scroll through Instagram or TikTok or whatever else it might be, because you're terrified of being alone with your own thoughts. You also don't like the, or most people don't like the way they look. So they don't like being stuck with themselves in this body or this vessel or this form of consciousness. Most people don't like the way their voice sounds. They don't like anything about themselves. And so if you can learn to fall back in or fall in love with yourself for the first time, which is kind of what these two exercises are for, you're not so afraid of being by yourself because you like who you are. In fact, time spent by yourself is kind of a beautiful thing. You're like, hey, I get to be by myself. And that can be the most fun backup option. Or eventually you don't even need a backup option for flakes. Because if someone flakes, you're like, cool, what do I care? I'm just by myself again. I like being by myself. Why would I care? You know, I've said this a million times. If I never had sex with another human being ever again for the rest of my entire life, including Imogen, my girlfriend, or anybody else, if I never had sex with another person, cool great. My life would go on. Obviously, I want to have more sex. Obviously, I love sex to pieces. But if I literally never again had sex, I'd be like, sweet, cool. What's for breakfast? Like, it wouldn't make a difference in my life because I like myself. But this wasn't always the case. It's only really been in the last year, I guess, maybe year or two, that I've learned to actually like myself. So take your time with these exercises, but they really, really, really do get to the heart of what we're talking about here. When we have a frustration with flakes, it's really that you believe other people will bring you happiness. And yes, other people can make you a little more happy. Other people can give you dopamine and validation and excitement and sex and joy and connection. And all of that stuff is beautiful. Absolutely. You can absolutely chase all of that stuff. And I, I, I love all of that stuff. Just don't attach to it. In other words, don't tell yourself that you need it in order to be happy. Don't tell yourself that I will only be happy once I have a lot of sex or once I have validation or once I get married or once I have a husband or a wife or kids. Don't tell yourself that your happiness is riding on those things. Don't tell yourself that your happiness is contingent on you getting those things. Because if you do that, you're then going to be unhappy until the moment you get those things. Which means what? You have to suffer and be unhappy for the next couple of months, years, decades, if it takes that long? That doesn't sound very happy. What if we skipped the middle man and we skipped that middle step and you were just happy right now while you work on those things and be happy whether or not you get those things? Because your life will go on. If you never have sex, your life will go on. You might tell the story that your life will be fucking awful if you never have sex, but you're allowed to tell that story. But it's not an objective story. It's a subjective story. All right, let's go through a few more actionable things that you dislodged or anyone else listening can go through, can do. Are you sending a confirmation text the morning of the date? So this is a big thing that I've always done. So the very morning of the date, I just send a message saying, hey, I'm looking forward to tonight or, you know, hey, can't wait to catch up with you tonight. Or, hey, I'm excited about tonight. I usually get pretty excited about dates. I'm like a little kid in a candy store when there's a date coming up. So I'll say, hey, I'm super excited about tonight. Can't wait to meet you. It's going to be so fun. And if the person doesn't reply to that, you know, if it gets to the evening and they don't reply, hey, they're probably not coming. But that I have found has massively helped with people not flaking. Another thing, are you booking dates within three days of meeting that person or getting their phone number? So, a lot of the time people will book a date for like a week from now or, you know, the end of the week and it's like five days away or something. I have found that if I can book dates within the next three days and that can't, that isn't always possible. You know, people have logistical reasons why they can't meet within three days. But if I can meet someone within three days, ideally even within two days or even the next day or even that day, if I can just meet within the next three days, flakes massively go down. Because the person is still excited about you, you're excited about them, you know, it's, it's, it's fresh in both of your minds. And then you go on the date, hey, you know, great, you're here, wonderful. But if I book it like five days, and definitely if I book it like two or three weeks away, yeah, flakes just massively go up because the person's less excited by that point. Even I sometimes get less excited. If I'm booking a date three weeks from now, I'm not as excited three weeks later. I'm not. Versus when I'm talking to that person right now and the conversation is fresh in my mind and I feel excited and I've looked through their pictures or I've talked to them in person, you know, if I, if I approach them on the street or whatever, I'm excited. 
And if we're going on a date that night or the next night, fuck yeah, I'm still excited that because I remember them, it's fresh. So book dates within three days, ideally, as soon as possible. But if it's longer than that, that's okay. You can still meet people if it's like one or two weeks away. It's just the flakes massively go up, like massively, massively, massively go up. Similar to that, are you booking for times when people flake less? So for me personally, I've found, and it might be a combination of me, it might be a combination of the city that I'm in, a variety of different reasons, but I've found that people flake less when I have a daytime date. So if I say to someone, meet me at 1 p.m. on Saturday, or meet me at, you know, 11 a.m. on Tuesday, you know, especially for like university students who don't work and so they have some free time during the daytime, like they're not working a nine to five. If I book a date for daytime, I get significantly less flakes than the evening, especially like if I'm booking a Friday or a Saturday night, I get flaked on way more because I think people will say, you know, yes, I'll see you on Friday night. And then maybe it gets closer to that. And one of their friends says, hey, we're all going out on Friday night. Do you want to come? And the person says, fuck yeah, I'll come, especially for younger people. Younger people are far more likely to flake like last minute. So that's another answer too. Like, is this just one of the things where, you know, I don't know who this guy is dating, but if you're dating, especially like younger people, like younger women, if you're dating 18 to 21 year old women, yeah, you're going to get a lot of flakes. Like, because people of that age live in the moment and that's a beautiful thing, but I wouldn't expect, and also most of them don't have a calendar. Like, I don't think I've ever, exceptions have been someone like Imogen had a calendar when she was 18. Some university students have a calendar, to be fair. Um, the girl that we're dating right now, when we met her, she was 19. I'm pretty sure she uses a calendar. But the vast majority of, of people who are younger don't use a calendar. And so sometimes they fucking forget that they even booked a date with you, which is why we send the confirmation text that morning. And another reason why I say to book within three days, like, don't book for one week from now because the person might forget because they don't have a calendar. And the number of times when I've had, you know, an 18, 19, 20 year old woman on that day go, oh shit, I forgot that we booked something. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. Oh fuck. Like, uh, we'll have to reschedule. And so here's another answer. Be okay with rescheduling. You know what I mean? Like if you want to, if you want to, and we'll get into this in a second, because you said in your question, should I just stop accepting reschedules. My answer, whenever someone says should, my answer is always, what do you want? There are no shoulds. Like I'm not the expert of any of your lives. You are, you are the one that has your own preferences, likes and dislikes. You're the one running your life, not me. It's not up to me to tell you what you should do. That's, you know, you're in the best position to do that. So ask yourself what you want. But I found personally that if I'm just okay with reschedules, as long as I do everything else that I've talked in this video, you know, loving yourself, having a backup option, like all of that kind of stuff. I don't really care about a reschedule. Now, if somebody rescheduled on me like three times, which sometimes happens, then I would just send that person a message and say, Hey, look, I, you know, I understand you're trying to do your best and all of that, but you know, let's not go any further. Cause I, I like a little bit of consistency in my life. I'm someone that, you know, I, I kind of like to know what I'm doing relatively. I can go with the flow and stuff, but if someone reschedules three times on me, that's, you know, no, thank you. I've even had a coaching client every now and then, like it's really rare, but every now and then I'll get someone booking a coaching call and then reschedule it and then reschedule it a second time and then ask to reschedule it a third time. And the third time I just say, look, here's your money back. Like, no, thank you. Like, I, I, I love you. It's beautiful that you know what you want, but what I want is someone that will show up to a an appointment, not like reschedule three times. And I get that life's busy. That's cool. But like, you know, let's not go ahead. So you can do whatever you want. You know, as for should I be upfront in my profile about that? If you want to, like, this is all just a big experiment. There's no correct answer here. But if you're asking for my advice, which I guess you kind of are, aren't you? Generally speaking, if you're someone that doesn't have a lot of dating experience, I have found in my own life, in the early days and with my clients that it pays to keep a little bit more of an open mind. And that doesn't mean that you do stuff that really hurts you or frustrates you or any of that. But if it's just putting up with a, a reschedule here or there, I don't think that's such a big deal. Again, do whatever you want. There is no should here. I suspect if you do the exercise of five reasons, this flake or five reasons, this reschedule is a good thing. 
I suspect you won't even care about reschedules. If you just do everything else that I've said in this video, when someone does reschedule, you're like, hey, that's beautiful. Now I get to have an evening to myself. You probably don't care if they reschedule even twice or something on you because you're like, cool. I get to practice writing five reasons why this reschedule is a good thing, which makes me feel good. So that's fun. Thank you for that opportunity. I get to go and look in the mirror and say, I love you to myself. That's nice. So thank you for that. I get to work on my list of 50 reasons or 50 things that are likable about myself. So that's good. I get to go for a walk by myself or hang out with my friend or have an early night sleep or work on my self-improvement. Like, thank you. I don't, I don't really, I'm glad that you rescheduled. I don't really care that you did. So I suspect that will probably answer your question a little bit, but yeah, I guess let's, let's finish up with a final little discussion of why people flake. Because I think there's a really good Buddhist quote that says, all suffering in the world is due to ignorance. And Byron Katie, one of my favorite authors, has a similar one where she says, all suffering in the world is due to confusion. And so by ignorance or confusion, what both of them are referring to is a lack of understanding. Like if we don't understand a situation or we don't understand why someone is doing something, it frustrates us and we suffer and it hurts and it's, it makes us very angry and all of those, or it can make us very angry and all of those kind of feelings, right? Like if someone is doing something that you think is irrational or you can't understand why they're doing it, you know, like someone cuts you off in traffic and you're like, why the fuck did they do that? You get very angry. But then if you were to find out that person cut you off in traffic because their wife is literally having a heart attack in the back seat and they're speeding to the hospital so that she doesn't fucking die. And he has been with his wife for the last 50 years. And she means the world to him. And he really isn't ready to let her go just yet. If, if you find out all of that context, are you pissed off that he cut you off in traffic? Or are you like, oh, shit. Fuck. Okay. Hurry up and go to the hospital then. Like you're no longer suffering. You're no longer frustrated. If you wake up one day and it's raining and you're like, fuck, I really didn't want it to rain today. God damn it. I had a picnic. Why is it fucking raining? That makes you very frustrated. But if I had told you the day before, you know, if you had watched the weather report the day before and it said, Hey, it's going to rain tomorrow. Now, when it rains tomorrow, do you suffer? Probably not as much because now you have understanding, you have some knowledge, you understand a little bit what is happening. Things that we don't understand are very fucking frustrating. And so if any of you feel yourself frustrated by people flaking on you or rescheduling on you or not wanting to sleep with you or not wanting to date you or, you know, breaking up with you, if all of that frustrates you, I would get in there and start having some understanding around it. Ways that you can do this. Obviously, the book that I mentioned before is probably the best way to do this. This book here is called I Need Your Love. Is that true? In this book, Byron Kitty talks a lot about these kind of concepts and helps you find some peace around the fact that not everyone wants to date you. Not everyone wants to be loyal. Not everyone wants to be your friend. Not everyone wants to love you. All of that kind of stuff. And I think that understanding can help bring a little bit of peace and take away some of that frustration and that suffering. On top of that, it can help if you actually just ask people. Like if somebody breaks up with you, you can say, hey, like, I'm genuinely curious, like, you know, no hard feelings or anything, but I'm trying to improve myself and work on myself and all of that. And I'm genuinely curious, like, why are you breaking up? And feel free to be as honest as you want. And sometimes those answers can be a little hard to hear. But what I've found is, and this is a question, I don't do it so much anymore because I don't need to. But for a long time, I asked every single person that ended something with me, I would ask them this question as to like, why? And I would add in the caveats, like I said, of, you know, I'm not going to judge. Like, I just want the honest answer. You know, I won't take it personally. Feel free to tell me if you want to or don't tell me if you don't want to. And most of the answers that I got had very little to do with me. Sometimes it did. Like sometimes they didn't like something that I said, or sometimes they just weren't super attracted to me or whatever else. But a lot of the time, maybe most of the time, they would say something like, look, to be honest, I got out of a relationship three weeks ago and I thought I was good with dating and that's why I was on Tinder, but I really can't fucking do this. Like, I can't believe I thought I should go on a date with you like two, three weeks after I broke up with my ex of like four years. Like, I'm not fucking ready for this. And I'm like, oh, now it doesn't hurt. Now, now I actually empathize with you. And I'm like, oh, sweetheart, I hope you're okay you know, go and do something nice for yourself, go and chill. And I can even send that message. And I, you know, I would send that message and say, you know, hey, sweetheart, go do something nice for yourself. That's, you know, I hope you feel better. Or I would get answers like, look, I'm just, you know, I'm busy as fuck. This was the answer I usually got. 
I'm busy as hell. I just have a hell of a lot going on right now. I'm a university student. Plus I'm working a full-time job. Plus I've got all this shit going on in my head. I, I just, uh, I, I don't think I can be consistent in showing up and coming to dates and stuff like that. Okay, cool. Now I'm not angry. You have your own fucking life going on. I'm not taking it personally. You know, I would ask the same thing when people wouldn't show up for dates. I'd say, hey, that's cool. Like, I'm genuinely curious why though. And please don't take that as me like judging you or anything. Like you don't owe me an explanation. I'm just, and you can even tell them, I'm working through some of my own, you know, I'm working on my dating life and I'm trying to take flakes less personally. Or I'm trying to take when people reschedule, I'm trying not to take it personally. I'm trying to show myself that it's not about me. It's got nothing to do with me. So if you're willing, it would mean a lot if you told me why. And you don't owe me, you don't have to tell me, but I'm curious if you want to. And you might find that you get some people, and I ask these questions a lot too. I would ask women all the time, like, why, 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 why? Because I'm trying to find more information. And once they would tell me, like, look, to be honest, my friend just came over and I really love my friend and she's really sad right now because she just went through a breakup and I really don't think I can come see you right now because like my friend is fucking crying on my couch. What, do you, what am I supposed to go and get fucked by you tonight? No, my friend takes priority. My friend will always take priority until I've seen you enough that I know you and there's some loyalty and some you know, connection and stuff there. Maybe after we see each other like 20 times, yeah, then maybe I'll put you above my friend. But why the fuck would I put you above my friend right now? I don't know you. You're a random. And so, and they'd say it nicer than that. But you hear that and you're like, oh, yeah, I would put my friend above a random person as well. Yeah, shit. Now I'm not frustrated. Okay. So that might help you. Any of you listening who are getting rescheduled, where people are rescheduling or you're getting some flakes happening or people are breaking up with you, you kind of just ask. And I've just found in my own life, when I actually understand the why, of why something's happening, I'm no longer frustrated. It doesn't fucking hurt anymore. It's not painful. So yeah, I hope any of that helps. I hope all of that helps. Like I said, I am very, very, very happy to do more of these, like answering people's questions. It's probably the direction, not the entire direction, but it's like part of what I want to do more on the channel. I really like answering questions like this. I really find this fun. I want to be here for all of you, like for whatever it is that you might want some answers to or want some help with or want a little nudge of motivation or whatever it might be you know whether that's stuff like this with dating and sex if it's bdsm and kink which obviously i cover a fair bit on the channel if it's money if it's love if it's self-love if it's mental health depression any of that kind of stuff any of the stuff that i've worked through hell yes just leave a comment and if i like your question i can't guarantee that i'll do all of them but i usually do reply to everybody's question for the most part so if you write me a question I will probably at the very least just write some sort of reply. Otherwise, I might do a video like this. And if this was helpful, if you would like even more help, obviously I have coaching. What coaching should I show you? I actually, I tell you what I will show you guys and girls, because I think some of you have asked this question where you're like, are you still doing these calls? If today's video helped you, I'm still doing these. Quite a few of you have asked me about these. Am I still doing the $200 coaching calls? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I will keep offering these for a little while. I'm having fun with these and, you know, people seem to like them. There's a link in the description below on this video and pretty much every video. So you can click that. You can book in a call here. Look at this fancy little form that I've got. You can choose any time you want, any slot available. Book in a call. We'll sit down. There's a few testimonials and stuff that people have left based on these videos. So you can pause the video if you want to read those. But yeah, people have actually been, I think, surprised with how much, like even this guy here says, in complete honesty, I had very low expectations going in. You know, it's it's like $200. You, you probably think like, yeah, it's like 200 bucks. That's like what a fucking decent counselor will charge. But I promise like I'll pour my heart and soul. You guys know me by this point. I'll pour, pour my heart and soul into helping you on those calls. I have a lot of fun with those. Um, they're supposed to be 30 minute calls, but the vast majority of them go for way more than that. You guys know I like to talk. I've had ones that go for like three fucking hours. No promise that we will talk for three hours, but I have a lot of fun with those, especially if it's a topic where I can see the person is really like, there's something that I'm really passionate about. We'll talk for a while. So link in the description below to those. I obviously also have my coaching program, you know, the big hardcore 12 week coaching program. So that's in there as well. As I've mentioned, I got the video course coming up. 
Um, the video course is basically about how I've achieved all my goals, all the mindset things that I've learned over the last like 10 years, big video course. So that'll be coming out soon. As always, ladies and gentlemen, go out there and crush those fabulous fucking goals of yours.